Okay, so uh, we read the about Hanukkah <laughs> yesterday. Okay, and um, he, the Rambam in Halakha Gimel and Perak uh, Gimel says, let's just read about the Takana again. Umipnei zeh because of this, meaning because of the war and the oil thing. Hiskinu chachamim shav oso hador. The chachamim in that generation uh, decree or enacted sheyihu shmonos hayamim ha'elu shetchilas mi leilach misha asrim bekislev yemei simcha v'halal. That the beginning. Sorry, that the, the eight days beginning from the nights of the 25th of Kislev uh, should be days of Simcha and Halal. Okay. Um, and that we should light candles in the evening on the entrances of the houses on each and every night of the eight nights. Now, um, just as a, as a PSA. So, you know, there's there's mistakes in the defus, right? There's, you know, and then the bad editions of the Ramam. Sometimes the mistakes are clearly like scribal errors, but sometimes they just make stuff up and add it. Okay, so this is an example. In the defus Ramams, it says, uh, you light the candles at night uh, on each of the eight nights, laharos ulagalos hanes, to demonstrate and reveal the miracle. Okay, and that's just something that is not written in any of the manuscripts of the Ravam. So I've heard, unfortunately, not, not that it's like, a, I mean, obviously the idea is true, but I've heard Shirin that like, like make the ichor of their Shir into that line from the Rambam and the Rambam just never wrote that line, you know? So it's not, it's not like it was on an old edition of the Rambam that he just, you know, erased, but whatever. Okay. And then he says, These days are called Hanukkah. And they are prohibited to eulogize and have fasting on like the days of Purim. And lighting candles on them is a rabbinic mitzvah like the reading of the Megillah. Okay, so um, you probably already have heard this idea, but um, what is the main mitzvah of Hanukkah? Halal. Okay, right. Which is going to be the presuming Nisa thing, right? So it's clear from the, it's somewhat clear from the Ramam, Okay, because he says um, that um, that they decreed that they should be yemei simcha v'halal, and then afterwards he mentions the candles. Okay, but what other indications are there that halal is the main mitzvah? Not just from the Ram, but just from what you know. We do. <laughs> yeah, Yosef. It's sort of like this like, itself a derisic concept, as in there. As in, like it's not a rabbinic convention, it's like there according to the Aristotle concept, and we presume that things that are like built into the Torah at some level have more importance than things that okay. are made up. That's a good indication, and in fact, there's arguably it's not even a do rice, it's not just a do rice um concept, it's actually a mitzvah do rice um in um in Corbin Pesach. At least I don't know about according to Ari Shonen, but like that that um, the Korban Pesach requires halal, you know, and that's not obviously not David and Malik's tilling, but yeah, but that there's a kiyum del raisa of, of halal. Yeah, fine. Also, I mean, the Gemara that spells out ah. things that we, uh, that we say oh halal. different Gemara. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> no, no, go ahead. No, no, no. You, you might, you might um, be making a good point anyway. I think that I, I, if I remember correctly, the Gemara that spells out the days where we say halal. Uh, does it say? Oh, no. I mean, I would hope it says Hanukkah. I think it says Hanukkah. Yeah. I would hope so, yeah. yeah. Right, but that, that just uh, is going to put it um, on par with the other things, the That's other, true. right. So one raya from the Rambam is, what does the rest of the parak talk about? The whole rest of the parak Gimel is about Halal, okay? And then parak Dala talks about the Neros, mm. right? And not only does that show that, the, so, so again, th these are not hard rayas, but like, when he's describing the Takana, he puts the Yemei Simcha V'halal first, then he says, and we light candles, okay? But then the whole first parak is devoted to the Halal, and then the candles come next. And not only that, but where else could the Ramam have codified Halal, like in the Mishnah Torah? Tefillah, right? That's that would be one good place. Or somewhere in water. Well, this is where he talks about halal in general. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I should have made that clear. Yeah, no. So, so he could have put it in like in Zmanim in. Well, this is right? Right, but he could put it, let's say, like by Yom Tov. He could have put it by, you know, um, by for all we know by uh, Sukkah the Lulav because we say halal on every day of Sukkah, but we don't do it on. You know, he could have put it in a number of other places. He puts it in Hilchos Hanukkah. Okay, but then perhaps the greatest raya. Is the Gemara, uh, which we did we read the Gemara about my Hanukkah? I know we referenced it, but did we read the whole thing? Let's read it anyway. 
My Hanukkah, what is Hanukkah? The Tanur Banan was taught in a brisa. This is on Shabbos Chaf Aleph Amud Beis. Bechav Hey Bekislev, you made the Hanukkah Tmanya Inun. The Lolo Lumis Bei Behon or the Lolo Hizanos Behon. So the, on the twenty fifth of Kislev, the days of Hanukkah are eight that you should not uh, eulogize on or no, you should fast on them. Shekshen Nichnesu Yivanim Lehechal. When the Greeks went to the Hechal, Timu Kol Ashmanim Shabe Hechal. They they impurified all the oils in the Hechal. Ukeshe Gavra Malchus Beis Chashmanai Venitzchum. And when the house uh, the, the Malchus of Beis Chashmanai uh, uh, defeated them. They only found one jug of oil that was with the seal of the Kohen Gadol. And they could only light uh, one um, for one yom. Uh, a miracle was done and they lived from it for eight days. The next year they established them and made them into yom tovim with hala and hoda'a. Right. Being Nothing about Neros. Okay, right. So the Brisa, which is the source, uh, and this is the source of Hanukkah in terms of of like the 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 main. There's no Mishnah about Hanukkah um, that has the mitzvahs in it. So this is the this is the thing. And Rashi there says you may hallel the Hoda lo shasurim b'malacha, not that they're also b'malacha shlo nikbu ella likros hallel v'lomar anis in the Hoda. That the, the the reason why the days were established is to read Hallel and to say Al Hanisim in Hoda, which is in Modim and in Birkaz Mazan, right? So sounds like the essence of the day is Hallel. And then what I was trying to find, so there's somewhere I know that it's written up, and I think it's by Rav Shechter, that the Rav said something, which is one of these things that like I would ne- never dare to say um, without uh, without evidence, uh, especially because this is someone contingent on history. The Rav said that they weren't masaking the mitzvah of Neros Hanukkah until after Hurban Bayasheni. Okay, in other words, that for from the entire, for the whole 206 years, from the uh, establishment of the holiday of Hanukkah until Hurban Bayasheni, it was just Hal and Hoda'a, no mitzvah of Neros whatsoever. Now, before I call on you, Yosef, conceptually, there's a very good reason for that. They had the menorah, right? In other words, the whole thing of the of our Neros is to remind us of the the menorah in the base of Mikdash, and they had the actual menorah, you know. So there would be no; it, it would stand to reason that they wouldn't be masaking it. So I asked around online for anyone who can find this written in the rub. I got a lot of people saying that they heard it from their rub, heard it from the rub Balpe, but I haven't seen it in writing. And then I've I've been asking around if anyone has any um like uh, actual evidence, like from history. So he he does mention not he. Josephus does not mention candles, even though he calls it festival of lights, but he doesn't mention anything about lighting candles. So that would take it or leave it. Yeah, you'll say what were you gonna say? Behold, they shall have argued about how to light candles. Right, but when were they though? What? When were Basil and Bishamai? Didn't like wasn't there was more advice and they, saw, they more or less stopped with the well, there was a boss call and they just sort of all wrapped up and just really stopped playing after call and bias. Wasn't after call? Uh, maybe I I just don't know what when like we, we, they, were definitely, they were definitely they were definitely after yeah base hello uh let's just say base hello um not congregation base hello <laughs> house of hello and shamai were in the first century CE. okay so around a little after after that yeah so I, I don't know I don't know when this mock locus uh, uh occurred uh, I'm not sure oh that's a hill and shamai were first century I don't know I don't I don't even know how long base hill and base shamai lasted I have no idea yeah so uh sorry okay so that that's just some background about the kind of Hanukkah okay but here's the theory okay um the theory so this is I don't know what question I'm answering it's just a pattern I noticed and this is also methodology in the Ramam which is that you know the Ramam is assuming that you you're learning the whole book and he is even though he borrows um you know, quotations from the main sources of Torah Walpe, he definitely formulates stuff in his own way. So whenever you see linguistic parallels in the Mishnah Torah, then that should be noted. Okay, so you have here, I'm going to highlight several things here, okay? We have here, I'm going to literally highlight, Babai Sheni Kishamalhu Yavan, okay, when, uh, during the second base of when Greece ruled, Gazru Gzeros Aisrael, Ubitlu Datam, Velohi Nicho Osam, Okay, so they didn't allow them. Oh no, I hate it when it does this. Uh, I gotta make it smaller. For some reason, it only does that when I make it too big. Um, and they did. They negated. They abolished their religion. And they didn't allow them to be involved in Torah and mitzvos. Okay. Okay, and then they abused their uh, their money and their their women, etc., etc. Ad shericham alein eloki avasinu v'hoshiyam yadam. So then God uh, saved them, saved us. Okay. So there's that. The Kohanim, 
And then v'chazra machus l'Yisrael, yeser al Masayim shana ad chorban hasheni. Okay, so I was reading this one year and I noticed, huh, you have an evil machus that doesn't let them be involved in Torah mitzvos. Then God saves us and the machus comes back to Israel. What is that reminiscent of? Not Purim. Not Purim. That didn't happen in Purim. Nope. I'll give you a hint. <laughs> the hint's going to give it away. Wait, what did you say? Uh, no. I'll give you a hint. It might not be in the past. <laughs> Mashiach. Okay, right? So if you look at the way the Ram talks about... <laughs> yeah. If you look at the way the Ram talks about Mashiach, okay, in the first time he mentions Mashiach, which is in Hilkos Tshuva, chapter 9, okay, so he talks about how, um, you know, the brothel, we did this in uh, Tefila two weeks ago, right? The brothels on the Klalos um, in, uh, in, what do you call, um, uh, throughout the Torah are there to facilitate our involvement in Torah. Then he says, So that's why uh, all of the uh, Klal Yisrael, the Nevim and the Chachamim, desire the Yimos Mashiach. So that they would gain reprieve from an evil Machus that, that doesn't let Klal Yisrael be involved in Torah and Mitzvahs properly. And they will find tranquility so that they can increase in Chachma. In those days, then the, the knowledge and chachma and truth will become abundant. Shnemar, as it says, uh, the entire earth will be filled with the knowledge of Hashem. Uh, and no man will, um, what do you call it, uh, teach his fellow war, I think the rest of the Pesach says. It says, I will remove the stone heart from your flesh. So because that king who will arise from the house of David will be a Baal Chachma Yeser Mishlomo, will be a wiser, uh, uh, wiser than Shlomo, the Navi Gadahu Karov Mi Moshe Rabbeinu. And he'll be a Navi that's close to Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay, that's another Rama Machlokas. Rama holds that he's going to be a greater Navi than Moshe Rabbeinu because he holds that the miracle of Tchias and Mesim is greater than any of the miracles of Yitzhak Mitzrayim. And he holds that, that Mashiach is going to facilitate that? Um, uh, yeah, the timing of the of Tchias Mason according to the Ramam is, is not specified. Yeah, yeah right, right. Um, I, I don't remember the Rabak sheet about the timing. Oh, uh, yeah, I think he holds that. I can't remember. Uh, and therefore, they will teach the entire people and instruct them in Dera Hashem. And all the nations will come to uh, listen. I know the Rabbah holds that the Tchis Mesim is going to be part of what changes all people to acknowledge Hashem, mm-hmm. that everyone's going to see it's undeniable. Mm-hmm. Uh, that in the end of days, then the, the um, base Hashem will be firmly on the mountain, uh, on the top of the mountain. And the ultimate good, which is uh, has no does not cease and is no diminishment, uh, is the life in the world to come. But Yimosa Mashiach is this world, um, and the world operates according to its uh, its pattern, meaning everything's according to the laws of nature, except it's amazing. But the Mahus will return to Israel. The Chachamim said the only difference between this world and Yimos Mashiach is the subjugation to the foreign uh, king, uh, kingships. So my understanding of like what the significance of Hanukkah is, is Hanukkah is the, uh, so, uh, you know, Purim was a gula that exemplified, that, that led to like uh, Kabbalah Sator and Me'ahava. Right, like that's the chazal about how you know God held the mountain over them, and then it wasn't until you made more five Esther that they accepted it out of love. Rebbe has a lot of shirim on that. In contrast, Hanukkah, I hold is the paradigmatic uh, uh, teshua. It's the it's the paradigmatic salvation because it mirrors what the ultimate salvation is going to be, which is evil machus not letting us be involved in avodas Hashem. God saves us, and then the machus Yisrael returns. In the time of Hanukkah, it was incomplete, but in the time of of Hamelach Mashiach, then it's going to be complete, and that, I think that's also why there is a, you know, the, the, that's a basis for the minhag of singing Malus Tzur, because Malus Tzur uh, talks about the 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 subjugations of the evil Malchios, 
and then puts Hanukkah in there also, and then talks about the ultimate um, uh, restoration of Malchus Yisrael in, in the future. And the hala, and then if you take this and you combine this with a shear in the um, in the kuntris, let me just see if I can find. Can you just grab me a Ramam sitter? It's just easier. It's much easier to find it there. Um, so uh, no, no, down, right, right, down, 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 down. Sitter Ramam. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, thank you. Um, so the Rambams, thank you. Uh, so the Kuntras has a shear on Hala, which I haven't been through in many years, but he points out, uh, his theory is that the, is Halal, is the, um, the theme of Halal is the, the political order of Malchus Hashem, uh, that that's what it's about, is it's about the transition uh, from, you know, Beis Yisrael in, uh, um, uh, Klaitra and Mitzrayim, all the way to the culmination, which is in Yemos Mashiach. And the Rambam's Brach of Halal, uh, like, does, uh, it's not our Brach of Halal, but the Rambam's Brach of Halal concludes with uh, Baruch Ata Hashem, Hakel HaMelech HaMahulo HaMeshubach HaMeforachai V'Kayim Tamid Yimloch Lelam V'Ed, that he, the, the theme of the Bracha is Malchus Hashem, you know, so, so it is fitting that the the Malchus and Hoda, sorry, the Halal and Hoda are the main themes of uh, of Halal. And then the only reason we care about the, okay, this is a side point, not the only reason. The the what what who cares about the nace of the uh, of the shaman? I know there's a lot of answers given on this, but what's your uh, impression? I mean, yeah, it's cool and all, but like it was strictly speaking, also it's not necessary because they should be putter from uh, from you know lighting the menorah if like. You know, like, like there, may, there are many times in Jewish history, in fact, arguably all other times in Jewish history, God doesn't do miracles to help us keep mitzvos, right? I mean, like most, like the Ram says in, uh, in the Yisraeli Torah that all the miracles in the Midbar were done um, for, a, uh, for a practical need. And what's the reason why the Jews didn't do Mila in the entire Midbar? Because Sakana. Well, didn't, shouldn't God help them all do bris mila? No, I mean, he's not going to do that, you know? So like in gen generally speaking, we don't have God doing uh, miracles to facilitate a CSM mitzvahs. Yeah. I think you could say maybe the menorah is a little different just in the fact that it's a constant. Okay. Always. Okay. And like, I mean, the way like- I mean, so is the Corbin Tamid, but God let that go. Uh, okay. Well, I'm, it's called the Corbin Tamid. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, go ahead now, go ahead, yeah something about it yeah i mean in order to and they were supposed to uh basically couldn't go out right they couldn't it, well it well it did for like yeah it did it did go out and they would just they would relight it i mean that was part of the mitzvah well, well, what a oh i mean there's a gemara about it but uh, it's, um, what what would you be spoiling uh, uh, i don't know like go over here for the next couple weeks oh fine possibly. okay okay fine all right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah well, I, yeah, um, yeah, Yosef and then Oren, yeah. What about Hashem laying the Mizbeach? Right, but that was something that he did. Uh, mm, nice. Not That's not, not necessary for the CSM Mitzvah. In fact, in Bayashin, he didn't do that, yeah. right? Yeah, uh, yeah, Oren? Uh, I don't know where I've heard this from, but I've heard that part of the idea of the Nase is that without it, um, there's kind of a Havamina that the whole, you know, rebellion situation was you know, a big mistake. Um, but this is sort of like God's seal of approval. Okay. That's my, that's my personal theory. Again, I, I, I know there's a lot of theories is that there's really two things. First of all, the more I learned about the history of the whole, you know, Khashmarayim war and stuff like that, it was at the time you could imagine it being very unclear <laughs> what was good and what was bad. And also we have the uncomfortable fact that Kohanim took the kingship, right? And Kohanim are not supposed to be kings. You know, and so the question, and yet it was a very miraculous type of victory, but it wasn't open miracles. So there's a question of, so to speak, like, uh, like, or saying like Havmina, a question of like, does this have the stamp of divine approval? And my understanding is that the nace in the, uh, in, with the Shemin was, was that sign that the Shekhinah is still with Klai Israel. Ah, oh, I like the Kohen Gilles stamp. Yeah, the, um, that, that it's a sign of approval that God uh, endorsed or it was still, forget endorsing, the God, the Shekhinah is still with Klai Israel, you know, um, despite all of this stuff. And remember, you got to remember, the miracles that went on in Bayez Rishon were not in Bayez Shani. So like having miracles in Bayez Shani was not a thing that was to be expected. So I think that is even more significant for that. Yeah, Yosef? Yeah, well, well, it's, 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 it
that there's a miracle that space time would stretch when the Jews would bow. Uh, there is a Mishnah that, that says that there was room for them to bow. Uh, and an interpret common interpretation is that space time would stretch, but the Rambam uh, doesn't take it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is, I could see this also. Yeah. Was it like something about rain? It's never raining like over these baths, or just walking around town. Like, um, I don't know about that. I know that there's the thing about the wind never um, dispersed the, uh, the column. Yeah, I mean, there's the, the Asar and Nisim were done in the base of Mikdash, and there, that is a mission that lists them. That was all by his Rishon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, so that, that's just something to think about for Hanukkah. And if you can find evidence or refutations or developments of the theory along Hanukkah, that'd be nice, because uh, this is, again, it's just like my little pet project that, uh, you know, like, like you know, the more more insights I find, like, for example, didn't we see, Yosef, in the thing that we were doing, that, didn't someone say um, that there is a cum of singing Hanukkah songs? Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is, uh, yeah, which, uh, let me just look for it here. Uh, -oh. <laughs> uh, I think we found, uh, let's, oh, was it in Megillus Tynus? Uh, uh, the tour, the Mordechai. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's in the, it's in the Ramah. Okay, the Darche Moshe in Orachim. So this is the Ramah, but in his commentary in the tour says, um, so we, we're dealing with the question of whether there's a chiv of Mishta and Simcha on, uh, on, uh, on Hanukkah, but the jury's out on that right now. But then the Ramah says, minhagim, which I don't know what that is. Su'udas Hanukkah Rushus. Okay, it, it's optional to do Su'udas Hanukkah. Volkein nogin lomar, lomar mizmorim, laharbos bo shvachos, kideshi yehe su'udas mitzvah. So that there is a minhag from the Sefer, the Hagas minhagim, whatever that is, to sing Zmiros. To, yeah, that's the Lashon of uh, Lomar. Yeah, I mean, not to recite, like, you know, um, uh, to, to say Shvachos of God at the Suda to make it a Suda's Mitzvah, which is its own question about what that exactly means. But yeah, okay, so that's that's that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would be appropriate song, yeah. Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> Just wait till I'm gone. <laughs> okay, all right.